Hello there, this is Nancy Reynolds, Stampin' with Nutsy, and I am in beautiful, whoops, that didn't work. Let me see if I can get this fixed. Technical difficulties. There I am. Hi. Sorry about that. I was pushing the wrong buttons. Anyway, I am here in beautiful Bellingham, Washington. It is gorgeous today. We've got sunshine and not much of a breeze out there today, but it is just lovely. As a matter of fact, I think a little bit later today, I am going out and mow my front yard. It's that kind of weather because it's not too hot. It's very comfortable. I've got fun a fun card to make with you today. Um, and I think we're going to make it in two different colors. I asked a question and I got a crushed curry and a lost lagoon card base. And I just thought I'd do them both just for the fun of it. So, and so since we're doing two cards, I thought we would save all of the, um, you know, the little things I've got. There's flyers I wanted to show you, some promotions, and some swap cards, and some, some happy mail I got. So let's save that for the end, and I am going to put you right down to my workstation. There we are. And this is our card. This is a three panel accordion card. Isn't that cute? And I'm using the um, inked and tiled stamp set and inked and tiled designer series paper, which is so pretty. And it's just such a nice watercolory look because it, and it's just, you'll see it when we're stamping. I really do like it. So this one is Lost Lagoon. This is how it stands up which is really nice because then you can see all of the three designer series papers. You've got a place to write your note. So let's get started. Here's the Lost Lagoon. We're going to go ahead and start with this one. And we're going to start with the stamping. I don't always start with the stamping. I forgot to ch that I changed from basic white to very vanilla which means I need to cut a piece of very vanilla cardstock to fit on my sentiment. So let me find one. I need two and three quarters. I'm gonna get it right here. Two and three quarter by four, two and a half inches by four inches. Bring this in, cut two and three quarters inches. I love my trimmer. I think of all of the items that I use, this is what I use the most. Hi Susan, good to see you. Hi Simone, I get to catch you too, oh, that's wonderful. There it is. We will be cutting another one for the other card stock, the other card, but here we go. This is we're going to change colors because I have all my measurements on the other cards and I want to be able to tell you what we're doing. So here we go. Any of you ever watched the show? Um, it was a uh, I don't remember the name of it now. It was an actress who at one point was very rather mean to her children and there was a child got really, really in trouble for having metal hangers. So I found this little paper clip and every once in a while we mail it back and forth to my daughters because we've all watched the movie. Okay, so here we go. Let's do the measurements. The card base is four and a half by 11 inches, so it's half a piece of cardstock. You're going to score it at two and a half inches, three and three quarter inches, six and three quarter inches, and eight and a quarter inches. If you're in a metric market, it's 10.5 by 29.7 centimeters, and scored at seven, 10.5, 18.5, and 22.5 centimeters. Then out of the other half of that sheet of cardstock, I cut two panels, four and a quarter by four and a quarter, or 10.5 by 10.5 centimeters. And what is left over 
This is all that's left over. It's great to put it in your bag of, bag of scraps. I think I have one of my bags of scraps here. This is how I keep them. I just got these little plastic containers. I put the name on them. I pop the scraps in. This one's going to get the Lost Lagoon scrap. And put them with my cardstock in a file cabinet. And I choose to keep mine in a file cabinet because, you know, light is not your cardstock's best friend. It does tend to um, kind of bleed out the color. I have that I'm going to put on top of one of those panels, a four by four or 10 centimeter by 10 centimeter piece of, just gonna go right like, just like this. And this is going on the front of the card. Cards Crushed Curry, this is Calypso Coral. I am very colorful today. The two and a half by four inch or six by 10 centimeter piece of, is gonna have our sentiment on it of a very vanilla and we're going to put oh this right next to it I've got this cut a little bit large so let me just keep it maybe make that two and a quarter instead of two and a half that's better and then this is a half inch by four inches or four by ten centimeters put all my little notes away. This will go on here, but we're going to do some stamping on this piece, so let's keep it out. We have a three by three, or eight centimeters by eight centimeters, piece of very vanilla that's going to be on our front. And then going on to last piece of designer series paper, it's two and a half by four inches, or 7.2 by 10 centimeters, and this goes on our last session section. So let's go ahead and do our stamping. Now, we should pull out, our stamping is the same for both cards. So there's our envelopes. I'm gonna do another two and a quarter by four. See, I've already got such a mess, it's hard to get to any of my equipment. Are you a messy stamper? Boy, I'm a messy stamper. And here's our second one. So let's go ahead. For my sentence, let's do Calypso Coral Ink. That is going to be one of our flowers on the front. And let me get something because my stamps are larger than the stamping area. So we'll do the flowers first on our focal piece. And this is a large stamp, so I am just going to turn it upside down and tap, 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 tap. It does help because these are distinctive stamps. If you don't have too juicy an ink pad, it looks like my Calypso Coral is in pretty good shape. Let's do our second one. I pulled one out the other day and I was surprised that it was as juicy as it was. Because lately I have found that I have needed to go in and ink my ink pads because they've been so dry. Setting this aside so I don't put anything in it that shouldn't be, like my arm. Grabbing Lost Lagoon. and my leaf pattern. That looks just a little juicy. Let's see. It was. So now we're gonna use second generation ink to make it just a little bit lighter. There we go. That's the look I'm going for. Stamp off and use the second generation. There we are. We're going to come back to that ink in just a moment. Let's do crushed curry with this cute little flower. Um, Simone, I'm going to put the measurements in the, the description 
when this is all over. So it'll be easier for you to stamp or to do all the cutting. And just ignore all the, the centimeter ones. Those are for my friends who are in Europe or most other parts of the world that use a different sized cardstock than we use. Okay, setting this aside, I want my Hello Friend to be stamped right on my card. And so I thought black ink would be better. You know what I did the other day? Try not to laugh too hard. Um, I took my black ink pad and I took it out and I put it down face down on my cardstock. So don't want it down too high, but I don't want it down too low either. Hello, friend. Now I do think that this one could be re-inked. Re oh, darn. I got a halo. Got a little carried away with inking. But you know what? Cardstock is magic. It has two sides. So let's start over. We'll just quickly, I'm gonna stamp this off and see if I get a little bit lighter. I think I like that better. And then we're gonna go with our leaf. Definitely stamping it off because it was way too juicy. And our crushed curry. I've got so many ink colors. Oh my goodness. It's crazy. I can die cut stuff out of... Oh, if I wanted to keep this and not turn it over and use the other side, yes. I have done that. And then once in a while, I have had gone ahead and stamped on the other side and went to put it on my card and realized that it was going to show on the other side. Step cards are notorious for that. Okay, let's do this and let me be more careful. And we'll get our hello friend right there. Much better. I'm putting away the black ink. Bringing in the two envelopes. For some reason, I have three envelopes. We'll get rid of one. And for my envelope, all I did was the larger flower in Calypso Coral. I inked it up. And it's the envelope, so I really don't care if it's too light or too dark. Oh, hi, Gladys. Good to see you, too. Oh, it's so nice to have my friends here. And I just stamped twice. And I'm going to do the same with the other envelope. I don't use Calypso Coral a lot, but I do like it. So I'm not sure why. So I'm really happy to have this particular stamp set and papers because they're out of my normal choices. Okay, we've got our cards done. We have got our two focal points done. Put those right there. Now we're going to stamp, thank you. I'm gonna do one in Lost Lagoon because one is going on a Lost Lagoon card. Let's make sure I don't have anything on it. There, that was fine. Then I will wash my stamp. The other one is going on crushed curry, so let's grab crushed curry. And put crushed curry on this one. Closing up all of these, well, no, I guess we're not closing up all the ink pads. I do need to put a little something on the bottom. So let's do crushed curry, since we did the small flour in crushed curry. And we'll just do that on both of them. 
that is all the stamping we are going to do. Now we're going to do a little folding and a little gluing together. Yes, I did put it down on the cardstock I was going to use. It was not a good thing, Susan. That was one that got stamped on. Oh, that did I get you die cut out of? Yes, I did. As a matter of fact, there were a few times I, I looked at it and I thought, well, what's, this is perfect. And I that cut something and was going to show on both sides again. I really need to look at both sides of things. <laughs> I tell you, there's a reason I earned my name. Let me take the two of these, put it with my Lost Lagoon card, and let's put our card together because that was all the hard work. The rest is super, super simple. Your very first fold, so I've scored it at, to say what's that? Hmm, let's see, go back to the card base. Note, two and a half, three and three quarter, six and three quarter, and eight and a quarter. And so the first fold is going to be a mountain fold. So just even up your edges, use your bone folder, and burnish it. The second one, is a valley fold. The third one is a mountain fold. And the last one, again, a valley fold. Furnish those up. So here's what you've got. You've got a little accordion card. So we are going to very first take and put our, we're gonna put everything on it except for the focal piece because I wanted to show you how I do the ribbon. This is Seal Plus. It's much easier to use than I thought it was. I've been, I've been making myself use it. And this is going to go right to the edge so we can put our Seal Plus. You could also use Tombow, you could use Seal. If it was something that was going to be moving a lot, had a huge amount of movement, I would probably use my tearing tape. So here we go. We'll just, I like to just even it up on the table and on one side with my fingers. Put that down. Our second one will have our inside sentiment, which probably was going to be thank you, but turned out to be hello friend. This one's getting hello friend twice. And I believe it's been um, it's light enough so that I can write over it if I need to. Because sometimes you need to write more than little spaces allow. This is where I get into trouble as I try to put too much pressure on these and then they feed back on themselves and it's not good. So let's just I will fix that one later. Let's go ahead and use a little Tombow on here. Tombow has the advantage is it gives you a little wiggle room. I'm going to leave a little space between these two. There we are. And this goes in here. So I think I'll do the Tombow. I'm going to fold that out of my way, first of all. Put just a little bit of Tombow. And line this up. Tombow's great. And it's what I normally use. But I'm trying to be good and use all the products so I at least know how they work. And I have one more piece and it goes right here. And I believe it is this one. It is. So, a little Tombow on it. And this will show when we have our card open. 
when it's standing up like this. And it does tie in all of our colors. So all our colors are tied in in more than one place, which is nice. That takes me to our sentiment. And I'm really liking this ribbon. This is the new ribbon, the Lost Lagoon. It, it comes, I believe, in this, this suite with the Inked and Tiled. And this is one place that I do need to have I do need to have seal. I'm going to grab I'm going to grab my seal. Because down here at the bottom, I just want to run a little bit of seal. Now, the seal I know really well. The problem with the seal that people have is the well, I have cat hair on mine. Um, it breaks right here. So when you're using it, you need to put it on and then turn it so it's at a 90 degree angle and lift straight up. And it breaks in the correct place. And I like to just put my ribbon around the bottom. I have arthritis in my hands and so they my fingers don't always work the way I want them to. And so tying bows can be very difficult, a little more difficult for me. My ribbon scissors. Here's another little tip. Ribbon scissors need to stay sharp. And paper dulls scissors. So I try to keep a little bit of ribbon wrapped around my scissors. Some people use charms just so that they're separate. And when I pick them up, I know do not use this on paper. Okay, so the way I tie bows, I cheat a little bit. I use a bow jig. It's just a block of wood with holes in it. What, about every quarter inch is that? Yes, they're a quarter inch apart. And nails in the holes. The nails, are. I can just wrap my ribbon around. Under and over. And a little, and I can tie a little knot on the back, kind of adjust it left and right as I'm pulling it tight, take it off, and I have a bow. And this is going to be a little long. That might still be a little long. And then I just grab a glue dot. It's amazing that I have glue dots. I have a cat that thinks this is the most wonderful thing in the whole world. Actually, I've got both of them on my desk getting my glue dots. They like to pull them out, get them on the floor. Um, I did not make this one. I bought it. Um, Kelly Atchison, I believe, is where, where I ordered it. But it, if you have talents or a spouse with talents, then it would be, it's not that hard to make. I have very little talent. Lee, my husband could have made it. I didn't ask him. I put a little glue dot under it to hold it all in place. And now it's ready to go on the front of our card. And I am not doing this, I'm not raising it with dimensionals because I like to be able to mail everything. I did this one on dimensionals and I'm not doing this one on dimensionals. Because guess what? This is going into, I'm going to, tomorrow morning, I'm going to check all my comments and I'm going to put them in a little random generator. And this is going to one of you. I am so glad to be able to share it. And it needs some pretties. So I was looking, what do I have in Calypso Coral? And I want you to know this is one of the few cards that I've made that does not have any Wink of Stella on it. This is the Iridescent Pastel Gems. I needed to cut it down to put in my little holder. 
And that's one thing that our Oh, thank you for sharing. I, I did mean to mention if you're having a good time and you're enjoying the, the video to please share and like it and follow my page. That would make me happy. Let's see. Here we are. Now it's got gems. It's all put together. So I'm actually going to let you choose which one you want. The Blue Lagoon. No, the Lost Lagoon or the Calypso Coral and Fresh Curry, rather. So the other goes together just as easily. Again, it's one sheet of paper. I'm actually not going to bore you and put it all together. I'm going to do it off camera. But you can choose whichever one you want. They're going to look basically the same. It's a lot easier to make these if you make a couple, three at a time, because you can kind of streamline it and do a little... um. Pretend you're um, bored on his assembly line. Okay, so I hope you enjoyed it. I really did. And I wanted to share some things that are going on. The first thing I wanted to show you, well, hi, Sheila, how are you? Thank you, Susan, for saying they're lovely. I appreciate it. Simone, I hope you win the card too. Who knows, I might even draw two names since I'm gonna have two cards. I wanted to let you know that we've just, Stampin' Up! has just added some special papers. Um, we've got new papers out. I don't think the picture does them justice, but having seen them on um, pictures of them, I think they're beautiful. I just haven't gotten any. Oh, Gladys, you like the Lost Lagoon? I kind of like I'm glad that color came back. Anyway, there's new papers there in my online store, if you're interested. Stampin' Up! also has a give back program. There's always something in the catalog. And this year, they like to make it, it's, it's important to make a difference. And so their Make a Difference paper is in the, the mini. Just so nice that it's live now and I can share it, there's um, this walk in the forest paper. And so for every $3, everyone that's ordered, $3 are going to be don donated. Thanks, Simone, for coming. I miss you, too. Um, the other thing is World Card Making Day is coming. It is so cool. I am going to, this is the Stampin' Up! This is Celebrating World Card Day Making Day. It's the first Saturday in October. So that's October 7th. Carol, I'm going to put those in the, and I'm going to type them into the description of the video when it's all done. So you'll have the directions because I want you to have those too because it's a fun card to make. Um, anyway, it's free. You just need to go on to Stampin' Up! and register for it. I don't know the time. I haven't been able to find that out yet, but I am registered. I am excited. And the other thing that's coming up on World Card Making Day is I am so thrilled to be working with several demonstrators. We're going to have 18 demonstrations on World Card Making Day. It is, it's posted in my features on my, my business page, so it should be just above this video, the information and the registration link. Um, it's going to be October 6th and 7th because so, several of us live don't live in the United States. I do, but many don't. And so we're somewhere in Australia, and that's why we start on the 6th, the evening of the 6th, then we go into the morning of the 7th after a nice night's sleep. And happily, since I'm on the West Coast, we have, we've moved it back an hour, so I don't have to be awake at 6 and getting ready to go. So I'm appreciating that. Um, and other than that, I think that's it. Oh, I promised I'd show you cards. Oh, my goodness. What am I thinking? I got some wonderful cards in the mail. I should have been clearing this up to make way for the cards. I take part. 
I take part in a, a swap with a, a group of friends. And this is, I've done pinwheel cards, but they've always been four-sided. This is a six-sided pinwheel card. I sent her a six-sided also, which was really fun. But they're fun to make. It's really easy. If this is something that you would be interested in learning how to make, let me know in the comments because I would be happy to teach a class on this. The most important part to get is this little mechanism in the middle. And it's not as hard as it looks. But isn't this pretty? And I think this is retired designer series paper. And I don't know where she got her sentiment, but I think that is really true. One small positive thought in the morning can change your whole day. I just thought this turned out, it was just so pretty. How did she know I liked pink and roses? And then she wrote me a really nice note. Her name is Kathy. So that came in the mail. I want you to see the pinwheel, but I want you to see how pretty it is too. I received a cute little thank you card from my friend, Sarah. Um, I didn't want to buy all the paper this time in the catalog, and so she was doing a paper share, and I took part in that, so I have a little bit of it all from the mini catalog. This card is from my friend Dana. Her husband passed away, and she's just thanking me for helping with the memorial, um, the get-together afterwards, and it reminded me so much of our Earth and Textures stamp set. One of my customers just sent this. It came yesterday. Isn't that beautiful? She did some lovely blending and she's using retired product right now, trying to use up her stash. And she's sending you a big smile. And this is from my friend, Shirley Meitzler and a beautiful message inside. I love that. This is from one of my, my new customers here in town. We met for coffee. It was so nice to meet her. And she thanks me for her ordering gift and said that she hadn't stamped or put done any cards for a while. So Shannon, good job. I love it. And then I received this from Cindy Howard. It is just beautiful. It says you inspire me. And it's got a really nice, cool bookmark, like magnets. It says right before God, beautiful, beautiful card. Um, that would be a tuft of my cat's hair. Sorry about that. And a beautiful message thanking me and saying she's enjoying my videos and she has shared them. So I love getting happy mail. Doesn't everybody? So I, let's see, so I'm going to come back to me. And I'm going to say goodbye. And I want to thank you so much for joining me. And again, if you like the video, if you, have, if you learned something or you have friends who would like it, you can always tag them in the video or share it and I hope you'll like it and maybe follow my page. Anyway, that's it for today. I'll see you soon, probably in two weeks. Take care. Happy crafting. Bye-bye.